Hi, I'm Natalie Benet. Today I'm here to talk to you about why I have chosen GYN and cytopathology. This is being recorded as part of the Path Elective online course. Um, and if you have any feedback or need to contact me, my Twitter handle is here as well as my website. So today first I'll talk about why I chose pathology. Then I'll talk a little bit about residency and how I came to choose GYN pathology, followed by my fellowship and then my practice of pathology. So why did I choose pathology? Um, my medical school experience took place in Kentucky. I am uh, studied at the University of Louisville. And as I went through my training, including the first two years, which were mostly in the classroom, I came to learn that I was a visual learner. I enjoyed my pathology course in medical school. It was taught by several pathologists. I'd also had exposure to pathologists as a phlebotomist, which was how I... Um, paid for um, undergraduate. So I had worked in a clinical laboratory, so I had some experience. And also, as I came to rotate through the clinical specialties in the third and fourth year of medical school, I realized that I was a bit of an introvert. Um, and I liked that pathology gave me time to think. Um, at the scope, you have time to think about your cases. And um, although I do quite a bit of teaching, I do spend quite a bit of time um, thinking to myself over the slides, which I enjoy. And I also see pathology as a career where we have impact on the patients, both in anatomic and clinical pathology, both of which I have been involved in in all stages of my career, and also through research, uh, both basic science research and translational research. Um, teaching also was a big thing that drew me to pathology. Even in medical school, I started tutoring uh, students in the pathology course um, as I got on into my fourth year, I enjoyed how pathology is a place where uh, students have one of their first exposures to um, attendings, attending physicians, and how pathology really forms the building block of learning in the medical school curriculum, as well as teaching of residents and fellows in the pathology um, experience once you are um, at the attending or even um, fellow or resident level. Also, I noticed as I worked around many physicians uh, that the work-life balance offered by pathology is appealing. I knew all along that I wanted to have a work-life balance for my family and for my mental health. Um, I don't think that I know any physicians, having worked in community practice and academic practice, who don't work very hard. The thing I can say about pathology is that because our patients are not waiting for us in a waiting room or ready in the OR at a certain time. You can make the experience of being a pathologist work around whatever kind of schedules um, you would like to have. And that, it, that was very appealing to me then, and it continues to be very advantageous to me now. So now I'll talk a little bit about my residency. I was a resident at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. Um, and as a resident, I knew early on that anatomic pathology was my favorite part of pathology. And specifically, I have always been drawn to GYN and cytopathology. I've been thinking a lot about this, and I think one of the main reasons was that we had such high volumes of both of these things. And many of the attendings who were just excellent teachers were very good at those two things, and many of them specialized in those two things. And I also noticed that Many of the people who were excellent surgical pathologists were excellent cytopathologists, so I always knew that that would make me a better surgical pathologist, and that was something I wanted to pursue. As well, uh, the frozen section room at UNC was always very busy. We had a very high volume of GYN specimens, and I liked how the interoperative experience was so dynamic and interactive, and it had such an impact on patient care. Also, I've always enjoyed looking at placentas. I enjoy that part of perinatal pathology and what an impact that can have on the patient and the family and the baby's experience. Um, so then um, I decided to pursue fellowship training in GYN pathology. So I'll talk a little bit about why I chose GYN pathology. Um, the first thing is that GYN pathology still allows you to be what I would consider an excellent surgical pathologist. There's a really good mix of cases from benign to malignant biopsies to resections. Um, you get to see, you know, perinatal or placental cases, benign cases from, you know, leiomyomas to um, even some skin conditions. 
um, which is interesting. And also uh, big resections for cancer. So those are also very interesting. And with the um, uh, ovary being involved, you also get to see a mix of germ cell cases plus epithelial uh, neoplasm. So it's a good, a good case mix. And um, the second thing is intraoperative cases. I mentioned that those have always been one of my interests. And I find that even when I was in community practice, intraoperative cases are important in GYN pathology. Most general surgical pathologists still look at intraoperative cases for GYN pathology. And because um, some of these patients are reproductive age, the impact on the patient can be big based on your intraoperative diagnosis. So I found it's very good, it's very important to be very good at this part of GYN pathology. And I like interacting with the clinicians in that setting. I find it um, very interesting. Also, the research in pathology is dynamic. There are translational projects where you can, you know, encounter a problem or a question that you have while you're signing out a case and then figure out a way to address that question and answer that for other pathologists who are in the sign out space. If you're more of a basic scientist, there's also plenty of opportunities to use the cl clinical questions um, from pathology to go into the lab and answer those questions. Um, there's lots of things going on right now with molecular research and genetic syndromes in GYM pathology. And then uh, teaching uh, stayed as a thing that made me love GYN pathology. You get to um, still interact with medical students. You also get to interact with um, clinicians, be they GYN oncologists or gynecologists or, you know, um, neonatal attendings. You also get to interact with um, residents and fellows. And then the teams, the clinical teams, I have found... Um, across all the settings that I have interacted with clinical teams in the GYN and OB setting to be a really um, wonderful group of people. I also appreciate that women are represented in leadership roles, and I have found them to be um, really wonderful to deal with, especially um, in the setting of of how it impacts the patients and interacting with them at interdisciplinary tumor boards and doing research projects. So my fellowship, uh, I, I completed a GYN and a cytopathology um, fellowship at Johns Hopkins. I'm not going too much into cytopathology since that's not my module, but I have mentioned the reasons why I pursued cytopathology. So I did both of those fellowships at Johns Hopkins and as a fellow, um, I was exposed to a high volume of cases, which I think is very important, especially for GYN pathology, as there is no, as of the time I'm making this video, there is no uh, board certification exam for GYN pathology and for many of the surgical pathology subspecialties, sort of organ system-based ones. So I wanted to go to a place where I would get to see a lot of cases, which I did. I saw a lot of um, in-house cases that I signed out myself, so I functioned a little bit like a junior attending. And then I also saw lots of consult material, both cases that the outside uh, consulting pathologist had a question about, and then also the patients who were coming to Johns Hopkins to receive treatment. I got to review a lot of outside cases, and I think in the setting of a uh, fellowship, the goal is to really see as many cases as possible, which I was able to do. And I was very lucky. So then I moved to uh, practice. First, following fellowship, I went into community practice. I wanted to go to a place where I would get to do general surgical pathology and have high volumes of GYM pathology, and I was able to find a place, um, Swedish Medical Center in Denver, Colorado, where I practiced for almost four years, and they had a very high volume of GYN cases. Also, uh, things like neuropathology, GI pathology. So it really is important to sort of keep your surgical pathology skills tuned up if private practice or community practice is something um, you're thinking about. And then the other thing I loved about that job was that there was a lot of cytopathology, not so much GYN cytopathology, which I did miss, but um, more of um, on-site assessment, core needle biopsies, um, unknown primary workup uh, cases where you got to go interact with the radiologist and uh, do adequacy assessments, which I thought was wonderful. And then 
eventually I, I missed academics and teaching. And so now I'm back in academic practice at Women and Infants Hospital in Providence, Rhode Island. It is a very subspecialized practice model where I do breast and GYN pathology and cytopathology, mostly GYN cytopathology. So it's very different from my former job. And um, I will say that uh, it's excellent for me. It's a good fit because I'm back to teaching not only um, residents, but also fellows, and now everyone who watches these videos. So I hope that that gives you a good idea of why I chose pathology and GYN pathology, and it's helpful. And if you have any questions, like I said, please reach out to me at uh, my Twitter handle or my website. Thank you.